Shalom and welcome to Tov, the Jewish news channel. We have with us today Yoni Ben Menachem, our Middle East expert. Shalom Yoni. Shalom, how are you? I'd like to ask you about the possible, perhaps, upcoming hostage deal, just with a caveat, today is Thursday and we don't know exactly if there is a deal and what kind of a deal there is. But that said, what do you have to say about the possibility of a, of a hostage deal and how it could um, affect our future here in the Middle East? Well, uh, there's already an outline for this uh, prisoner exchange deal, an outline that was uh, uh, agreed in Paris uh, a few days ago between the representative of uh, Egypt, Qatar, Israel, and the United States. Uh, and uh, Israel gave a positive uh, answer and uh, said that it, it is accepting this outline of the deal. Uh, and now the uh, uh, all the sides that are involved are waiting for the uh, answer of Hamas. Uh, uh, the leader of Hamas, Ismail Haniya, is, uh, like you said, we're recording this interview on the Thursday morning, uh, is scheduled to come uh, today to Cairo, uh, have consultations with the uh, Egyptian intelligence. He will hear all the details about the outline, uh, and then they are supposed to uh, give the answer uh, to the mediators, uh, to Qatar and Egypt, whether they agree or not. Uh, Hamas says that uh, its uh, response uh, to the outline of the deal is not only Hamas's position, and that they are consulting with all the Palestinian factions, and uh, there will be a united answer uh, to the proposed uh, deal between Israel and Hamas. So um, the, the deal we heard about, it just sounds almost fantastic. I'm not in a good way. Uh, fantastic, I mean, um, not realistic. Uh, they were talking about 35 hostages, I believe, and releasing 4,500 Hamas prisoners. Is that right? Well, the Prime Minister office uh, denies that uh, the outline that was agreed upon in Paris uh, goes specifically into the details how how how, how what, how many uh, a terrorists will be released in exchange for the 35 Israeli hostages? Uh, and, they, and they say that uh, there's not the keys, it's called the keys for the deal uh, and, and not being agreed upon. It's just a general outline with principles. This is what the Prime Minister office uh, claimed. But uh, there's no doubt that uh, this is a, a very dangerous deal uh, for the security of Israel much more dangerous, in my opinion, than the Shalit deal uh, in uh, 2011 when uh, uh, for uh, one Israeli soldier, uh, Gilad Shalit, Israel, and Netanyahu uh, actually agreed to release 1,020 uh, terrorists, and among them, uh, Ikhya Sinwa, uh, the architect of the massacre of uh, the 7th of October in the settlements near Gush, uh, near uh, uh, Gaza Strip, and uh, uh, all this uh, catastrophe that we see now. Uh, so uh, this is a very dangerous deal. What is dangerous is not only the numbers. I don't know if, if we accept the, the Prime Minister uh, office uh, answer that it's a response, that it's not, that there are no numbers yet. Uh, still, uh, from what I hear from Hamas, uh, they want to release uh, in this deal very dangerous uh, terrorists, uh, uh, mass murderers, mass murderers, I call them, uh, that committed uh, horrible terror attacks uh, against Israel uh, during uh, the Second Intifada, and also to release the architect of the Second Intifada, Marwan Barghouti, and also the, the, the one, the, the master terrorist who is a, 
uh, responsible for uh, the assassination of uh, Minister Chavan Zaevi uh, and uh, also other terror acts, uh, the leader of the Popular Front uh, named Ahmad Sadat. So uh, if these uh, dangerous terrorists are released, we should anticipate more atrocities, more massacres, uh, because uh, Hamas insists that they will uh, be released uh, into uh, the West Bank, into Judea and Samaria, uh, and then they will be able to reorganize all the Hamas uh, cells and Islamic Jihad cells and Popular Front cells and uh, organize a, a, an armed intifada against uh, Israel. And of course, uh, what they're trying to do since October the 7th is carry out more uh, uh, massacres in the Jewish uh, Israeli settlements, what it's like what we call copycat. Uh, so um, this is a very dangerous uh, deal. And I, I, I don't understand the logic of the Israeli leadership, why they are going uh, for such a deal, for such an outline, which is very dangerous. Uh, they haven't learned anything from the Shalit uh, deal. And uh, it seems that they are yielding or uh, surrendering to the American pressure. And also, I must say also to the pressure in the, of the Israeli media in different uh, studios, in uh, different uh, news channels that are putting a lot of pressure on the Israeli government to accept uh, this horrible deal. Don't the people in the studios realize that? They don't understand? I mean, on the one hand, they pushed nonstop for months on end for the Shalit deal. And then after the Shalit deal, they blamed Netanyahu for what happened. And now we're seeing a replay of the same story again. And it's, now it's it, difficult now to understand. Now it is more dangerous. Uh, and of course, they, uh, I see the analysis that they are putting on uh, different channels. I don't want to go into specifics where everybody knows who, what I'm talking about. And I see the the generals, the ex-generals that they are interviewing and all sorts of people who call themselves uh, experts for the Middle East that never, uh, uh, never saw a Palestinian in their life, never spoke to, uh, to any uh, Hamas uh, member uh, don't know the Arabic language, and they are analyzing what is happening in, uh, in the mind of Ihya Sinwar, and uh, they are uh, analyzing the logic of, uh, of uh, Hamas, uh, and uh, this is something that is outrageous, really. And uh, they are working uh, according to a political agenda, not, uh, not uh, a pure analysis, objective analysis of, of what is happening. And this is very alarming, and what is more alarming is the Israeli leadership is, is surrendering to this pressure. This is even more, more, more worrying because it seems that uh, the Israeli leadership did not learn any lesson from the, what happened in the Shalit deal. And this is something very dangerous. I can understand that there are American interests in this situation. I can understand. I may not agree, but I can understand that there are American interests. But what about Israeli interests? We, I think you don't have to be an expert in the Middle East to understand what Sinwar wants and to understand. It's very simple because he says it. He tells us exactly what he wants. He wants to destroy Israel. So there's something strange about experts and generals, ex-generals, who claim to understand what they what the Arabs want when the Arabs tell us exactly what they want. They write it in their charters and they state it at every opportunity. Yes, but there are some uh, Israelis, uh, so-called experts, who want to ignore the truth and they want to uh, think uh, uh, that the Arabs really uh, want to, uh, uh, in this case Hamas, uh, really wants to coexist with this. To coexist, to the, don't understand think, uh, uh, creating an independent Palestinian state. They don't do that, and they think that the, the two-state solution uh, is something that is good for Israel. Uh, while we all know those who deal with the Middle East and those who speak Arabic and those who read the Charter of the PLO and the Charter of Hamas, 
we know that is only a stage, the establishing of a Palestinian state is only a stage in the plan uh, of stages to uh, destroy the state of Israel. We know that. And more worrying is that now uh, uh, President Biden, uh, who is fantasizing all the time about the two-state solution, he sees the war in Gaza as a leverage to put on Israel in order to force it to accept the two-state solution. Uh, so, um, and he, he, he's pushing now for uh, the end of the war in Gaza, uh, because, you know, this is a presidential year in the United States, uh, elections. He wants achievement uh, to present to the uh, American people that he has achievements in the Middle East. This is going all to be on the expense of the state of Israel, because he will he wants to come out and say, I made this deal between Israel and Hamas, and now there is going to be a long ceasefire, and afterwards, uh, as was reported uh, last night in the American media, the Americans, American administration estimated that after such a long ceasefire in Gaza, the Israeli army will not be able to renew the war. So, actually, he's aiming to stop the war, and uh, have this deal between humiliating deal and dangerous deal for Israel with Hamas, uh, and then uh, uh, go to uh, what is calling a political horizon for the Palestinians and negotiate uh, an independent Palestinian state. In return, Israel will get normalization with Saudi Arabia. This is the whole, this whole scenario, this whole outline of the American administration is very, very dangerous. Not only the prisoner exchange deal, but the whole political outline. Is normalization with Saudi Arabia a feasible option? And is it really something that we should make such sacrifices for? Yes, you see, the uh, before the war, uh, before uh, October the 7th, uh, there were negotiations between Israel and Saudi Arabia uh, about normalizations, uh, and uh, they never mentioned the Saudis, they never mentioned the independent Palestinian state. Uh, they only wanted uh, uh, the approval of the Americans to enrich uranium in Saudi Arabia to get a nuclear uh, uh, facility to enrich uranium, just like Iran. And they also wanted very advanced weapons from the United States. Uh, uh, that are like F-15 F and so F-35 F and other weapons. And uh, the security establishment in Israel told Netanyahu, this is very dangerous, we cannot accept that. So uh, uh, the, the talks did not uh, reach any, any progress before the war. But now, after the war, the Saudis are raising the price. Not only that they are demanding the, the nuclear facility and the advanced weapons from the United States, they're also de demanding or, or putting as a condition uh, for this deal of normalization with Israel, the establishment of a Palestinian state. So uh, this is really, really dangerous for Israel. We're not, not going to gain anything from this uh, normalization with the uh, Saudis. Even, even on paper, what would we get from the normalization that we don't already have? I mean, everybody knows that we already have basically trade relations and other uh, security exchanges with, uh, of information with Saudi Arabia. What more would we get? I, can't, I don't foresee a very warm peace anyway, you know, uh, with Israelis visiting tourists and so on and so forth, like in the uh, Emirates. Uh, what, what do we have? to gain from this so-called normalization, which is already, normalization is already a euphemism. We're not talking about peace. We're talking about normalization. That's already a step down, at least one step down from peace. Yeah, it's called uh, cold peace, like we have with Egypt and uh, Jordan. Oh. Uh, I, I absolutely agree with you, but uh, uh, apparently, uh, our leadership, uh, I don't know what, what they want exactly. Maybe they want the, the, the legacy, maybe they want it to be written down in their history, or in the biography, that they are the one that uh, made the normalization in Saudi Arabia. Uh, but nothing can be done on the expense of the security of the state of Israel. And uh, uh, after w what we saw in the October 7th is that uh, Israel can be surprised again 
after 50 years from the uh, Yom Kippur war. Almost and, to the uh, day. Uh, Almost yeah. on the same day, one and day what, difference. Yeah. Exactly. And uh, uh, if I look at the political and security echelon today in Israel, uh, I must tell you, because I was an intelligence officer uh, in the Israeli army, and I, I saw what happened in 1973 with the Yom Kippur War, I'm very worried, uh, by the way, this leadership, uh, the political and military, are looking at the Middle East and uh, don't understand the mentality. So if there, even after the uh, 7th of October, these massacres can occur again, can reoccur because of the mentality and the way that the people in Israel think. And they are not uh, doing the right steps as we see now with this deal with Hamas to secure this, uh, the full security of Israel. This is very worrying. And on that worrying note, thank you, Yoni, uh, for this talk. Uh, just, just one comment before I forget, please. Yeah. They also, Hamas demands also, just imagine, in, in this uh, prison exchange deal, they demand the release of all the Nukba terrorists, those who committed the massacre in, uh, in the settlements, uh, 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 the Israeli settlements on the Gaza border on the October on the October 7th. 7th. Those, who, mm -hmm. those who killed. Those who raped women, those who beheaded uh, children, these, they want them to be released. They demand it in this deal. That is morally repugnant to the extent that I cannot even express. Thank you very much. So the only hope that I have, the only hope that I have is that uh, we have two ministers in the, in the, in the cabinet that mm -hmm. are opposing this deal, which is uh, Bezalel Smutrich and uh, Itamar ben -Vir, and I hope they will do everything in their power and really uh, do it uh, to stop this horrible deal from happening. I think this is the moral uh, obligation and the security obligation for the state of Israel. All right. Thank you very much. And thank you to our viewers. And don't forget to subscribe and like us on all our media channels. Shalom.